Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weirdly Cosmic podcast for the Aquarius full moon that will be taking place on um, August the 11th um, here in the US and August the 12th um, in many other parts of the world. Um, we'll look at the chart in a minute and the times. But first of all, I would like to welcome new subscribers. And um, I always thank you for subscribing and for giving thumbs up, not thumbs down, thumbs up, and for checking the little bell. Um, all followers, comments, thumbs up, subscribers help the YouTube algorithms. And I'm always very grateful for those that watch and listen to my podcast. Um, so um, I am Louise Eddington, the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology, the author of three books, uh, Modern Astrology, uh, The Complete Guide to Astrology, which is my best-selling book, always a kind of a number three of astrology books, and my new book, The um, Complete Guide to Tarot and Astrology. Um, you can find me at links um, in the show notes, louiseeddington.com. Um, so let's dive in to this podcast. And um, I am just, no, I'm not. Okay, so <laughs> bear with me. I pulled three cards for this uh, full moon um, that is going to be taking place at 19 degrees Aquarius. And um, and interestingly, I pulled three reversed cards. I've been doing that a lot lately because um, I find it interesting because we are involved in a fixed cross energy. On this full moon, it's uh, creating an actual grand cross to the um, moon's nodes in the fixed modality. So that means uh, the signs of Taurus, okay, uh, Taurus, Leo, uh, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And fixed signs tend to be a little bit more stubborn, a little bit more immovable. And I always think of reversed tarot cards a little bit that way. So I actually pulled three cards for this full moon because we are actually, I'm recording this on the day of the Leo new moon on July the 28th. We are entering what's likely to be um, the most intense, challenging time of the year for many in so many ways. So it feels very apt that I pulled reversed cards. Now I'm using a new deck for this podcast. I'm actually using the Tarot of Dreams by Giro or Ciro, sorry, Ciro Marchetti. And um, I saw them on another podcast that I watched and I was like, I love those cards. I'm going to have to buy them. So this is my first reading with these cards. First of all, I pulled the three of wands reversed. You can see that there. If you want to see the picture upright, there's the um, guy kind of looking dreamily towards this sailboat that's sunning and shining with three wands around him. But this one is reversed. And that means uh, lack of roots, sorry, that means inability to see that way forward. Can't quite see that what you're going. It, it, it suggests feeling this kind of blocked limitations creatively. One's a very creative fire energy. And this is suggesting that there's delays, stuckness. Um, so you get the idea, lots of stuck energy. Now, the third card, the second card I pulled, sorry, my brain's still a little covid -y, I think, is the Nine of Pentacles. So this is the Nine of Pentacles in the Tarot of the Dreams. Beautiful card, the Venus card. Incidentally, the other card was the Sun in Aries card. So um, that would normally be forward movement. This is Venus in Virgo. And uh, so that's very much about details and kind of purity as reflected by the dove. But this one is saying, uh, suggesting unstable finances, feeling lack of security and, and perhaps a bit of overindulgence. But really, I'm going to say it's that lack of security. As I record this, um, uh, the we've just in the US had the second quarter of um 
GDP going down, um, which is an indicator of recession. We've got inflation. People are feeling that we've got a low housing supply feeling of people are feeling very insecure. Interest rates are going up. This is what that's indicating to my mind on this full moon. We're going in a, a period where we feel very unsettled, insecure, can't see the way forward. And then I finally pulled the King of Cups. Okay, look at that. These cards are delicious. But I pulled it reversed again. And this is all water signs. Cups are emotions, okay? Um, it's also the... Um, the king of cups is kind of about fire and water and so if you think of fire as creativity and cups more as the emotional this is really feeling stuck emotionally feeling um, anxious possibly lots of anxiety coming up around the themes of the um, other cards that I pulled and and really kind of uh, kind of this ennui, lack of caring, lack of um, lack of emotional stability and, and, and again, ability to see the way forward. So, you know, I pulled all three of these reversed. So first, the three of wands, sun in Aries, unable to, to kind of get that passion moving forward. And then um, the uh, nine of coins, Venus in Virgo, feeling um, materially uh, blocked and unstable, and then emotional and creatively blocked as well. Now, and I'm not really surprised when we look at the chart. So let's look at the chart and then dive in and speak about the astrology and the numerology. Okay, so bear with me one second. I just want to, there we go, that's better. So here is the chart for the um, full moon. It will take place on August the 11th, 2022. So that is an 8, 9, 10, and 6, 16, 7 universal day. So there is, pos you know, I'm always Miss Sagittarius, Miss seeing the positive side. There is um, a real... Uh, potential for kind of tapping into um, the connection with source and spirit and coming up with some innovative ideas on this but I'm not going to lie it's kind of challenging so the first thing I point out when we look at this full moon is a moon uh, full moon is always a moon sun opposition so we have the moon at 19 degrees of Aquarius opposing the sun at 19 degrees of Leo and they are, it's square to the lunar nodes. Now, not only that, as I record this on July the 28th, um, on July the 31st and August the 1st, uh, Mars, Uranus and the North Node are all meeting at 18 degrees. And not only that, Uranus is starting to slow down. He's at his... Um, retrograde degree he will be turning retrograde on august the 24th so we're not in the retrograde zone yet but he's sitting at that degree for a long time and uranus is the kind of the great awakener um the lord of lightning bolts innovation but also sudden change shocks and surprises so we've got a lot going on now with me recording this and this full moon and then this full moon being square the nodes, this that's always um, on the bendings, it's it's said to be. It's kind of a pivot point, a turning point. What happens now is going to be big change in this lunar cycle. So <clears throat> excuse me if I feel a bit croaky. If you remember, I, I have had COVID on the last new moon, um, the cancer new moon that came down with COVID. And my throat's never been quite the same since, but I feel fine. But if I feel a bit croaky, then that's fine. Other things I'm going to talk about in this are that this full moon is conjunct Saturn. Saturn is um, in Aquarius retrograde at 22 degrees and approaching a close, almost exact square with Uranus again. Now we had three exact squares in 2021. 
this kind of pull between the conservative and the innovative, the breaking free, the, um, you get the idea. So I'm gonna be talking about that. Um, and also um, I'm gonna talk about the fact that Ceres is trying Jupiter. As I record this on July the 28th, Jupiter stations retrograde. So he's still at his retrograde degree and Ceres, the great mother, is trying to Jupiter. So I kind of feel like there's some big lessons coming from this full moon and possibly some big breakthroughs. So I'll be talking about all of that. The main aspect that's not involved in this fixed grand square, grand cross, that's very tense is um, that Juno is in a sextile aspect to this little cluster here on the north on the Taurus North Node. And Juno is also making a quincunx, an um, aspect of adjustment to the sun and a semi-sextile to that. So I'll talk a little bit about Juno as well. Um, but just know that we are in really a very challenging time coming up. This month um, is intense, but um, with great challenges can come great opportunities. So don't kind of despair, but I do think we're going to feel a little bit stuck. Um, you know, it's it's kind of going to be hard to make the breakthroughs. We're not going to be able to see the way forward, as I, as I said, but I do think it's going to emerge. So, all right. So 19 degrees um, Aquarius. Let's look at the numerology first of all. Okay, so we've had the cards, now the numerology. And the number 19 is a really interesting number. It breaks down to um, add up to a 10 and a 1. And we're on 11 day, so we're kind of a, an opening, a gateway. But um, the number 19, the ancients called this, and give credit where credit's due, um, my favorite and uh, numerology website is numerology, the numbers and their meanings dot blogspot dot com. Okay. So if you want to go and look up that website for numbers, it's um, it just resonates the most with me. So number 19, the ancients called this the number of surrender as your life needs to link up with the universal life. The number 19 is an endurance vibration. It brings everything into focus, winds up old accounts and starts off anew. Pe um, the, the 19 is, um, is really about new beginnings and endings because it's not an easy number. So we have the one new beginnings, nine endings. And so it's it's kind of like we're at this turning point, which fits the astrology perfectly as well, um, where we want to kind of um, erase past mistakes and develop our true spiritual character with unspeakable, unshakable faith and a philosophy that will sustain us. Taurus being very much about sustainability with the Taurus North Node. Um, so the... 1910-1 relates to an experience that cannot be avoided. It's really about kind of standing on our own two feet and saying that we'll need all the positive traits of all the numbers one through nine to get through this time. So it's kind of a tough number and it's one we, we can't escape from. And I think we see this uh, collectively that we're really kind of at a tipping point um, where we have to look up regarding uh, many issues in our world and many of us are feeling this at an individual level as well particularly if you have anything around 19 degrees of the fixed signs of the chart that would be me <laughs> um, so it's kind of saying we've abused our power the 19 um, says that we've we've abused our collective power and we're being brought to this place to create balance for ourselves and others in this experience. So you can see it's a really, really kind of powerful, powerful number. All right. So that's all I want to say about the numbers. So let's talk about the astrology. So first of all, this is an Aquarius 
full moon. And Aquarius is the sign of the um, humanitarian, the genius, it's future oriented, it's freedom loving, free thinking, it's uh, the sign of fellowship and solidarity of rebellion and um, and revolution. <laughs> okay, it's very reforming and um, very science-based as well. However, Aquarius is really an unusual sign because it's very paradoxical. It's also um, a very um, um, malcontent and kind of aloof and cranky. Uh, the, the rulers of Aquarius of this full moon are Saturn and, um, and Uranus. And as I mentioned, when we looked at the chart, Saturn and Uranus are both involved in this. And um, let me sh quickly share again. Okay. So Saturn is conjunct the moon on this and Uranus is conjunct the north node. So we've got this push pull between the um, the the old way of Aquarius, the conservatism, the authoritarianism, and this liberationary vibe that wants to take us to um, to into the future, the ultra modern, the innovative. And so we've got this, we really, and we see it in our society, right? We've got the, the push-pull of conservatism that's been on the rise, the authoritarianism. And then we've got the, um, the uh, progressive, the innovative, the far-sighted, the genius, the rebellious. Okay, so it's, it's a very challenging full moon, especially because it's um, square to the nose. And at this pivot point for us all collectively, pushing us towards the North Node of what's sustainable. People will think different things of what's sustainable. You know, some people will think we want to keep things the same, like what always worked, you know, the um, these old rules that will work. And they always worked, so let's stick with it. But then... <laughs> Uranus is saying, but did these old rules work for everybody? You know, is it time to break free of those old rules? Because they served some and not the few, perhaps. That's one way of looking at it. And um, with Saturn um, square, the full moon and a full moon being really a point of release, fulfillment and completion. And Uranus being on the north node, which is our dharma, our collective dharma, what we're being pulled towards, what we're longing for, what we yearn for. We're yearning for something that's more sustainable, all right? And of course, Venus rules that north node and Venus on this full moon will have just moved to the zero uh, of Leo to be joining uh, the Sun and Ceres in Leo on this um, full moon. And that's a very creative sign and about the heart and heart-led relationships. Venus in Leo is going, it's time to really lead with the heart. So it's my feeling that the uh, liberationary, uh, rebellious vibe is actually kind of got the edge slightly. That's my feeling. <laughs> so I hope I'm right. I hope it's not just because I'm more of the uh, liberationary, liberationary um, rebellious kind of vibe and saying, no, this is not working for the people. We have the moon, which represents the people in the sign of Aquarius, the um, sign of the humanitarian and the collective, really, um, in the sense of groups of people. Um, so uh, the moon is the moon is saying the people are saying we need to create new rules as this Saturn Uranus square gets close again to an exact square, but not quite. Um, we're kind of finishing up that push pull energy over the next few weeks um, of this really challenging period that we are moving into. So you can see it's a real turning point. And I kind of think you can feel this in, in the zeitgeist of the, the world. You know, we've got this um, 
we've got the the Ukraine situation, we've got the Taiwan situation. There's there's different sides are kind of fighting each other. We, um, we want it this way, we want it this way. We've got the political unrest in the United States, in the United Kingdom. Then we've got the climate crisis, which is very much associated with all this fixed cross energy, particularly in the um, energy of Taurus on with Uranus and Mars on that North Node. Now, I did mention that I would talk about Juno in Pisces. Juno is our sacred partnership um, asteroid. She, um, in Pisces, she's really speaking about our interconnectedness with all that is. Um, Pisces is the energy of the amniotic fluid, the, um, the um, energy of the dream time in the Aboriginal language, the creation story. It's the time before birth and the time before death. It's that chaotic energy um, from which we are all we all come. And you know, it's reminding us that we are really connected to everything, to all that is. So this impacts the yeah, um, issues of the political issues that we have going on in the world. And it indicates, um, you know, the connection with the collective interconnectedness of all that is on our planet that we live on, right from the mycology, the mushrooms, the fungi that kind of creates webs underneath the earth and how the DNA of um, fungi is actually very similar to human DNA. It's, it's asking us to remember that everything is connected. Now, Juno is in um, a quincunx to the sun in Leo. And the sun in Leo is, is about rulership. And the sun is in the sign of Leo that it rules. And it's kind of saying it's time to adjust those that rule or those that we pick to rule or the hierarchical kind of um, um sovereign uh, rulers of the earth and say we need to adjust and we need to uh, move to a form of rulership of somebody that remembers how interconnected we are that we're all in it together and um and it's in a sextile to that north node with mars and uranus conjunct um out between now and the full moon as I record this on the 28th of July and the sextile is a supportive aspect it's one that's moving us forward and this suggests to me again that we are going to be pioneering and moving forward to something that's more works more for the people that reminds us of our interconnectedness now, one thing I forgot to mention when we looked at the chart, so um, I'll look at it again for those just listening. The chart's kind of in two halves. <laughs> OK, so if we look to um, one side of the nodes, um, everything is moving direct. All right. And then if we look at the other side of the nodes, which is the area we're coming from, the point from the south node to the north node, where all the planets have gradually been moving towards the North Node over the last 18 months or so, um, we've got all the planets retrograde, which never goes retrograde, of course. And that indicates to me that we are going back over some of the lessons that we have learned over the last few months, particularly since the last draconic bowl started in December 2020 when Mars crossed that southward and then all the planets on the other side of the nodes are kind of in new ground okay and now we have one two <laughs> um three four five six of the main planets in this new ground saying it's time to create something new okay so it's kind of a real split chart which is very fascinating to me especially because we've come out of a period of three draconic bowls which would roughly tied in with periods of lockdowns and increased pandemic and so on and so forth where we where we've kind of felt lockdown and 
and in this alchemical bowl of transformation. Now the moon is in the side of the chart that has all the retrogrades. Okay, so we are revisiting what's working for the people, in my opinion. We are revisiting the rules with the moon being conjunct retrograde Saturn. We are revisiting the structures of our society. Um, we're revisiting the man-made laws. Are they working anymore? And I think it's clear that, um, you know, some events have um, revealed that a lot of the rules had holes in them that could easily be manipulated and broken. And um, and I'm not being, um, you know, this is happening everywhere and things need to be tightened up and made sure that they work better for the people. I'll be really happy if Citizens United gets overturned in the US, but I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see. There's, um, we've had a, a climate change bill and a various other things, bill that's just being passed as I um, record this. So there is hope that good change is coming. Now, the last thing I wanted to really talk about, okay, on this powerful, but very tense full moon, and I think we are all going to kind of feel this anxious, um, you know, to look at this reverse Queen of Cups, anxious emotional energy as we move through this lunation cycle. We've got, as I mentioned, Jupiter retrograde in Aries, almost in an exact trine to Ceres, the great mother in Leo. And Jupiter is stationed retrograde. This is at eight degrees. Eight is the number of great courage and great strength. Um, it um, in the tarot, in the top tarot that I use. Um, oh, sorry, I picked up the wrong card there. <laughs> If you did, I gave you my old deck, but funnily enough, that was a Prince of Cups, so also emotional blocks. That's the one I'm talking about. But um, this is saying Jupiter in Aries retrograde, trying to um, Ceres in Leo direct at eight degrees, is saying we are able to really go back and look at our part in all of this. What are we doing? How are we creating more balance and being in more in alignment with um, the earth and the natural cycles of the earth? Burning off that which no longer works. I think many of us in this period will be making adjustments in our own lives to perhaps live a more sustainable living. And I think this Jupiter series trying is kind of saying burn off some old ways, burn off some old identity. Like, you know, we are moving into a new age, a new paradigm, and things are not going to go back to the way they were. I'm, I just have confidence that nothing is going to go back to how it was. And how can we kind of use the creative energy of fire to make big adjustments and big changes in our lives so that we live more from the heart and more in alignment with the cycles of nature and um, and the seasons and so on and so forth all right so let's now move to the symbols all right so the symbols are lovely as well and this is why i have great hope from this um full moon um especially you know it being on that turning point the bending square the nodes moving us to the taurus north node which is venus ruled the sabian symbol is a large white dove bearing a message and funnily enough, even though we pulled this reversed, that I'm pulling this on July the 28th, I kind of have a feeling the full moon will kind of turn things up bright. We'll feel a release. Venus in Virgo has this white dove, which is represented by uh, the Magdalene. Um, it was a little dove. Um, the dove is represents um, spirit. 
And um, so a large white dove is bearing a message on this full moon. So the keynote by Dane Rogier was the answer of spiritual agencies to thorough, sustained and victorious individual efforts. So um, the individual who has gone courageously and with indomitable spirit through his crucial crisis receives, as it were, a deep spiritual blessing from the soul realm. Mission accomplished, accomplished, peace be with you. And in this blessing, a secret prophecy of what is yet to come may be seen by the perspicacious and spiritually sensitive mind of the recipient. Every real spiritual step a, a, a person takes in their development is the result of a victory over forces of inertia, that stuckness, remember, or destruction. The divine is totally present in the heart of all true victories. So I, I just, um, so it, it, it does, there's a little note at the end that says what the message is depends on the particular situation. So each of you will get your own messages through this, but collectively, I find this really hopeful. The white dove always signifies peace. At the very, at the very heart of this peace is the certification of individual worth and victory. So that symbol really gives me hope that on the release of this full moon as it squares the nodes, we are going to really hit a turning point for humanity and for each of us. Now the Chandra symbol. So I'll finish with the Chandra, Chandra symbol. But before I do, just another reminder to subscribe to my channel if you're watching on YouTube. So the Chandra symbol, Aquarius 20, is a fine silk thread strung across a chasm. Inward intention counts for everything. Outward results do not matter. You are dropped into remote places to be a subtle glue, a connecting intelligence just along the inside. Upon the outside, nothing happens. A tenuous sensibility stays tuned to subtle frequencies with celestial dispassion. You are remarkably absent from the daily rough and tumble of what seems to go on around you. Inexplicably and improbably, you indwell an otherness, an alienness that consciously has no idea what it is doing. But when you are around, other people find that there are blessings, breakthroughs, protections, and odd phenomena, adding up to the impression that one is touched by something marvelous and strange. Being an empty, open vessel for the cosmic and inhabiting foreground consciousness, not at all. Being an empty, open vessel for the cosmic and inhabiting foreground consciousness, not at all, just being there, nothing else is asked. So that to me suggests that perhaps not to look at this as stuckness, even though you may feel a bit stuck, but as having to just sit and be and let this evolve because we're in this most amazing time Uranus is involved, so it's very much about expect the unexpected. We're kind of not sure what's going to come down the pipe, so we can't really prepare for it, but we can sit and allow our shift to come through. So it's a powerful time. I want you all to um, tune into the energy of Leo and do lots of self-care and love and lots of kind of creative energy and pursuits that give you joy and fun because sitting there and kind of panicking about what's happening in the world is not going to make a difference just know and trust that's another message of Juno in Pisces trust that everything is connected and that we are birthing something really amazing and really um, hopefully going to be a wonderful new paradigm Okay.
So thanks for listening. Thanks again for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, I hope you will subscribe. If you check the little bell next when you subscribe, you can get a little notification within YouTube that when I upload new videos. Um, if you listen on iTunes or Spotify or any of those places, then, uh, you know, I uh, I welcome you too, of course. I hope you subscribe there. Um, if any of you feel called to stop over to iTunes and leave a review on my podcast, hopefully a five star, I would very much appreciate five star reviews on the podcast, preferably written ones. So um, for now, it's so much love from me and this full moon and this period from July the 28th to August the 11th is one to really hold on to your hats. So um, try and ride the wave and enjoy it. So for now, it's goodbye from me.